Welcome to Online Algebra 2. Today, we're going to be covering Section 7-6, Natural Logarithms. So, our objective here is to evaluate and simplify natural logarithmic expressions and to solve equations using natural logarithms. And the first thing we have to do is talk a little bit about what natural logarithms are. And so when we look at here at our essential understanding is that the function y is equal to e to x and y is equal to the ln x natural log are inverses of each other. Okay, so just as before, this means that you can take the exponential function with a base of e and transform it into a natural logarithm and vice versa. So the function y is equal to e to the x has an inverse and it is the natural logarithmic function. So when we talk about logarithms, we had a couple special logarithms. This is a logarithm of a base two. This without a base is a logarithm of a base 10. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this section is talk about this other special logarithm, a logarithm with a base e. Now, the reason why we wrote that is to uh, notation, right? To, to not have to write a little 10 down here just to make it easier. The same way we don't write a two right there, okay? So when we're writing a natural logarithm with a base of e, we're gonna use a special notation and it looks like this, the natural log of x. Well, you're probably thinking, well, it's ln. Why didn't you just put nl, natural log? Well, it's also a mistake to think that the mathematicians who, who came up with this stuff uh, spoke English, right? Uh, most of them, it was ancient Greek or Latin, especially. Uh, and in Latin, the way you say natural log is logarithmus naturalis, so ln as opposed to nl, okay? But this is not a new function, okay? It's not something different. All it is is a logarithm with a base of e, all right? So we're just simplifying this logarithmic expression with a little bit of a shorthand. Okay. Looks just like a regular logarithm and its inverse the, or sorry, this is the exponential function with the base of e, and then this is the natural logarithmic function. Again, reflections across the line y is equal to x <coughs> because they're inverses of each other. So, because this is just a regular logarithm, all the same properties are good for these as they were for logarithms. So if you want to write this as a single logarithm, I notice there's a minus. I'm going to combine these with the power property first. And then I'm going to combine them with uh, division. So this turns into 15 squared over 75, which I could simplify to 15 squared, whoops, 15, 15 squ squared is 225 divided by 75 is three. So this is just equal to the natural log of three. All right, um, again, it just means the log base E of three. These two mean the same thing. This is just the better way to write it, the shorter way to write it, easier way to write it. Let's try some Gavagata problems and see if we remember some of these properties that let us put logarithms together. A plus means that we are going to multiply the insides. Uh, coefficients come to the front as exponents. So this turns into seven times 25. So this is the natural log of 175. Uh, minus means Division, numbers in the front come to be exponents. So this is the natural log of x to the third. 
minus the natural log of 2x squared, both of them squared, not, not that, not just the x. Uh, and now we simplify it with division. So that's the natural log of x to the third over 4x squared. If I square both of them, those two cancel, and we get the natural log of x over 4. Now we can't do anything with this. We can't subtract these two because they're different types of logarithms. But once we combine them, we're able to simplify the inner fraction. Okay. And then this last one, uh, natural log of x to the third times y squared times 5. So let's rewrite that. Natural log of 5x to the third y squared. Just rearrange it, right? Plus means we multiply everything to the inside and the coefficients become exponents. All right, so we can use inverse relationships between the natural log of x and e to the x power to solve logarithmic and exponential equations in exactly the same manner that we did in the last section. Okay, so that means you see this on one side, okay, I have to rewrite this as an exponential function. Okay. Take the base. The base of every natural logarithm is e. 4 is the exponent, and it's equal to whatever, ooh, made a mistake, is inside the natural log. I should have done something else first. Okay. I should have uh, divided that to out, make this a little bit, uh, simpler. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. All right, so never mind. I was doing okay. E to the fourth power is equal to uh, x minus 3 squared. Uh, if I take the square root of both sides, uh, square root of e to the fourth is plus or minus e squared is equal to x minus 3. And then we just add 3 to both sides. So my answer becomes x is equal to 3 plus or minus e squared. And this is just a number. I just put it on my calculator, okay? And I can get my two decimal answers for this, which is about 10.3 and negative 4.39. Okay? But it's better to leave, to leave it uh, in the exact form. This is the exact form in terms of e. All right, let's try a couple more of these. Base e squared is equal to x. That's nice. It's done. Uh, let's actually calculate that. So we get e squared is 7.3891. Uh, this one, same as before. So we have e to the fourth power base to this exponent is equal to whatever is inside the logarithm, okay? Square root both sides, and we get e squared is equal to 3x plus 5. Subtract the 5, e squared minus 5, and divide out the 3, plus or minus, okay? So we have a plus or minus e squared minus 5 over 3 is equal to x. And again, I can plug that into a calculator to get all the decimal answers. Uh, now with this one, with part c, before you can solve the logarithm, you have to put these two things together. So that's the natural log of 6x is equal to 2. And now I can change it to an exponential function. Right, and then divide out the 6. So x is equal to e squared over 6. So with all these, what was my goal? My goal is to isolate the variable. And I do that with a logarithmic equation by rewriting it as an exponential equation. And if you see natural log, the base of the exponential equation is always, always e. Okay, so now let's do the other way. Now let's solve an exponential equation. I'm probably not going to be able to make the bases the same, so I'm going to have to take a logarithm of both sides. 
But before I do that, I really want to get the variable by itself. So I want to uh, simplify as much as possible. So 14 divided by 4 doesn't really simplify, but we'll just put 3 and a half. Okay, from here, now you should take the logarithm of both sides. You can take any logarithm you want, like we said in the last section, but in this case, it makes the most sense to take the natural log of both sides. Because when I do that, the power can come to the front. So this is 2x natural log of e is equal to the natural log of 3.5. And the natural log of e, a logarithm with a base e of e, right? What power do you raise e to to get e? It's just 1. So this just cancels. So we have 2x is equal to the natural log of 3.5. And now all we have to do is divide out the 2. Okay. And again, you can leave it in terms of a natural log, or you can use your calculator to calculate the natural log of 3.5 and then divide it by 2 and get 0 0.6264. Okay, let's try some of the guided problems. Take and all these, all three of them, just looking at them real quick. Isolate the term with the variable, isolate the E, take the natural log of both sides. So here, I'm just going to jump right to it. Oops. X minus 2 is equal to the natural log of 12. So that turns into X minus 2. The whole thing goes to the front. And this cancels. This is 1. So now we just add 2 to both sides. And we have that x is equal to the natural log of 12 plus 2. Again, calculator and get the answer. Here, we divide out the 2 first. So that's e to the negative x is equal to 10. Now, I could take the regular log of both sides, but that doesn't make the left side easier, which is really what I want. So that's negative x is equal to the natural log of 10. So x is equal to the negative natural log 10. Okay. And then the natural log of 10 is not a nice number as opposed to the regular log, but we would have had to do more anyway. Uh, this would be uh, the natural log of 10 is 2.3. So my answer would be negative 2.3024. Okay. Uh, last one over here, subtract 5 from both sides. And we have e to the 3x is equal to 10. Take the natural log of both sides. 3x comes to the front. And cancel, divide by 3. It doesn't really cancel. It turns into 1, so uh, we can just multiply the 1 out. And we have the natural log of 10 over 3. Okay. And again, plug it into calculator to get your final answer or just leave it like that okay let's try one with a little bit more stuff involved in it but i think we get the idea of these uh so far and they're really not too bad you see a variable you see a variable in the exponent you know you're going to have to take a logarithm you see an e somewhere in this problem might as well take a natural logarithm first step subtract it out negative three e to the negative 2x minus 4 is going to be negative 90. Divide the negative 3 out to give me e to the negative 2x minus 4 is going to be equal to a positive 3. Now we take the natural log of both sides, remembering that this whole thing moves to the front, parentheses, natural log of e is equal to the natural log of 30. That is just 1. Now I just add 4 to both sides and divide out a negative 2. Let's actually calculate this all the way. So we have the natural log of 30 plus the 4. Remember to do these first and then divide by a negative 2 because we're dividing every, these canceled, we're dividing everything by negative 2. 
and you should get, if you're trying this on a calculator, negative 3.7006. Uh, pretty typical for logarithms that the question might ask you for four decimal points. Uh, round to the nearest 10,000th, but um, do whatever the problem asks you to do. Let's try a word problem. Okay, let's use some natural logarithms. So a spacecraft can obtain a stable orbit 300 kilometers above Earth, Earth uh, if it reaches a velocity of 7.7 .7 kilometers a second. The formula for a rocket's maximum velocity in kilometers per second is given to you right there, V negative 0098T plus C times the natural log of R. The booster rocket fires for T seconds and the velocity of the exhaust is C centimeters or kilometers per second. The ratio of the mass of the rocket filled with fuel to its mass without fuel is R. So these, it's just telling you what all the numbers are here, okay? So we're just gonna have to plug all these in and use my formula. So hopefully we have T, C, and R. Okay, so let's see. So V is equal to negative. Well, actually, let's, let's, let's write out our variables, okay? So R is my uh, ratio, 25. C is the velocity of the exhaust at kilometers per second. And then everything's gonna work out here nicely with the units, which is kind of nice. Uh, T is 100 seconds. Can the spacecraft attain a stable orbit of 300 kilometers above the Earth? So let's see. It needs to go this fast. It needs to reach a velocity of something bigger than 7.7 .7 in order for you to get a orbit, uh, a stable orbit. So let's plug this in the formula. That V is equal to negative 0 0.0098 times 100 plus 2.8 natural log of 25. Now, order of operations here, make sure you do inside of the natural log first, multiplication, multiplication, and then addition afterwards. Okay, so when I calculate all this, I get, let's, let's take this one step at a time, negative point, uh, 0.98, right? When I multiply by 100, uh, plugging this into my calculator gives me natural log of 25 is 3.219. And add these together and we get about 8.0. So that means that the maximum velocity of this rocket is 8 kilometers a second which is bigger than 7.7, so that means it will get to a stable orbit, right? The formula here is not important. The big thing is being able to recognize a formula, see it has a natural logarithm, and plug it into the calculator with everything in the right spot, okay? So hopefully this section was a little bit of, a, of an overview of some of the stuff that we did in the previous section with solving an equation, and in the section before that with combining logarithms. Okay. Uh, so all of this should be hopefully not too bad. And that is the end of 7-6 natural logarithms and the end of the chapter.